welcome to this new project and today we're going to be looking at how to use an ESP32 as a DCC accessory decoder. Now I started to use the ESP32 boards because firstly they come at a very good price I think I paid about five pound for this board they are very very fast I think it's about uh, 240 um, megahertz compared to 16 for your average Arduino uh, they've got some extra features things like I2S which allows you to manipulate sound uh, that's one of the key reasons I got into this board uh, I was interested in having background sounds on my layout and I wanted to be able to mix sounds and these boards have the ability to do that they also have a lot of pins, a lot of memory. Um, the downside of the boards, they're a little bit more complicated to use. They're not quite as intuitive as an Arduino. A lot of the pins have multiple functions. The pinout isn't as straightforward in an Arduino. You know, if you go up the side of the Arduino, you start at pin zero and you sort of work up to sort of pin 13 on the one side and the same on the analog with the ESP32 the pins seem to be all over the place but that's just the way it is um, so I wanted to build a DCC accessory decoder and I started off trying to use the NMRA DCC library and unfortunately even though the script would compile and all the rest of these things it would not run now that library does actually say that it doesn't support this type of board so that I wasn't really that surprised but I was determined to make it work so here's how to use one as an accessory decoder now the first thing you need to do is connect your ESP32 to the track and do not do this directly otherwise you're going to fry your ESP32 it's as simple as that um, so what I did was I went to a website and it's called um, Mina Bay let's just bring this page up I've got a link to it in the Digital Town website there'll be a link below the video to get you to not only the code but the various links and this is about building a uh, DCC monitor now you don't need to worry about the sketch because it's probably not going to work on an ESP32 but what it does do is it goes through how to build the circuitry you'll need and the parts you need are listed here this couple of is you know three resistors a diode and an opto isolator it's going to cost you a couple of pounds probably to build there is a circuit diagram for those who know how it works but for those who don't know how they work he actually goes through how to build this on a breadboard bit by bit and you just build up the circuit and you know it shows you how to plug it in to your Arduino on the sketch that I've written for the ESP32 I happen to use pin 2 just as you do on the Arduino you can change the pin on the ESP32 but as I'd started on pin 2 I was going to stay there so what I did, bringing this image across, is my OPSO isolator, diode, the resistors. These two blue, blue wires go off to the track. Obviously my ESP32 sits in here. And these different headers here, this one's going off to a servo. On this one I've got a, um, a serial UART MP3 player. Uh, there is... Um, various things that are coming off this board to different components because one of the great things that you can do obviously with an Arduino and an ESP32 is instead of just using it as a standard accessory coder for moving a turnout or a point using a servo you can actually start to create animations so when it's all put together this is my ESP32 dev module sat on top of the whole lot that's the board and all I'll do is I shall screw this thing onto the bottom of the baseboard when it's all in place. So what I'm going to do now is quickly change the screens over and we'll take a look at the code. So the code comes in two tabs. There's ESP32 Accessory Decoder 
which is what the script is actually called and it then has a second file decoder function now this particular file you don't need, really need to worry about um, I I've never written a proper library as such but what I wanted to do was get all of the functions out of the way and into a separate file so it just didn't interfere with uh, the script when you're writing it. So these are basically the different functions that are called to make the system work. Uh, there is a function on in here called print packet just in case you do want to have a bit of a play and see what your system is sending to you you can uncomment um, let's see where it is yeah if you uncomment this line it'll actually show you the raw packet data and again if you uncomment this section it'll show you various other bits of information that are coming through if you're so inclined however when it comes to this file as long as it's in the folder you really don't need to worry about it at all so let's have a look at the main file so I've included Arduino H um, I did that because of the software I was writing it on um, input pin 2 that's the pin that is connecting to the circuitry that goes to the track through the um, opto isolator serial speed 115 200 tends to be the standard for the ESP32 um, do not alter this line I'm not going to explain it but just don't alter it <laughs> and a few other things here um, various variables that I define that are required for the various functions now in your setup all you do is you call initiate decoders and then in the main loop you've got this function DCC packet read and this basically deals with the packets of data as they come in and then the only function that you need to worry about in fact it's the only function on this script is this one control accessory decoder and this gets called by some of the stuff on the other page again don't need to worry about how it happens but the important thing is it does that little bit of magic that takes the DCC signal and converts it into something that we can use so it gives the board address uh, the index um, the accessory address and um, the direction that the items got to be moved now this is a bit of a weird one it's the way that the um, DCC packet is sent across it's not always very uh, intuitive so what I've tried to do is reduce this down and make it as simple as possible so there is a switch statement in here and it switches on the accessory address so if this is turnout number two if you send I think it's if I put mine to go left um, or right I can't remember one or the other one way you get a zero the other it passes a one so all you need to do here is if you've got a servo to move a point or whatever or a controller relay do some sound whatever this would be your one direction this would be your other direction if you're calling accessory with an address your accessory with an address of two if it was an address of 120 guess what do exactly the same again if it's got an address of 1300 you could basically put as many items on this board as you want um, it's not like uh, when you buy a commercial unit and it's got eight addresses and usually they've got to be in order so if you start with address 2 you're going to finish up with address 10 or whatever with this you can put any addresses in that you want put whatever code you want in here if you're using an ESP32 one of the nice things that you can do is obviously you can write um, different functions using RTOS the real-time operating system the great bit about that is once you've triggered them you haven't got to worry about a function interrupting any other function it's just going to run on its own again look up um, RTOS and how you write those uh, functions if you want to know more about it and uh, if you can't find anything 
put a note on the Digital Town website and I'll do a tutorial on those things. But that's basically it. Put your code in here to do whatever you want to happen when the accessory decoder address that is listed in this statement is called and it will happen and that is it. It's as simple as that. So I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. Again, if you need the code and the pictures and the links to the MENA Bay site, they're at this address on the Digital Town website. There'll be a link below the video. And if it's been useful, click the like and subscribe. Thanks for that. See you soon. Bye for now.